Hi, in this video, I will build a strategy that was shown by IT Jagan in his Traders Convention video that he uploaded on YouTube. Now, in this video, we will first try to understand what the strategy is, after which I'll show you how you can duplicate the same strategy in your Tradetron account and test it on paper trading completely free of cost. Finally, I'll show you how we have built this strategy so that making modifications in this strategy is very easy for you. So let's directly get started. What exactly is this strategy? Now in this strategy, we are basically doing something called in stocks. So we are mixing index options and we are mixing stock options. The purpose of doing this is that you must have seen that the index, even though it is volatile, it moves in a range. It, uh, it, it, it generally has a small range in which it is moving. You'll never see that the index is going up by 20%, 10% and so on. But the same can very easily happen in stocks. So stocks like HDFC Bank could fall 10%, ICICI could rise 7% and so on. So what we do is that we use options of stocks to, short, uh, to make short strangles. And those short strangles, we don't keep naked. We keep a hedge, but this hedge is bought in the index instrument. So for example, we are looking at one particular uh, one particular sectoral index, which is Bank Nifty. In Bank Nifty, we know that the weightage of, of, of ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank is close to 50%. So it is not possible that Bank Nifty goes up, but ICICI and HDFC Bank go down. That is very rare and may not definitely happen. So because of this kind of a thing, what we can do is that we can short options in the ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank instrument and we can buy a hedge for that in the uh, in the nifty bank uh, nifty bank options why nifty bank is cheaper or uh, cheaper to for your for your hedging and the uh, and the stocks are basically giving more premium for the shorts that you make so now let's see how you can duplicate the same strategy uh, and and run it on your tradetron account so in the link in the description you will find a link where you you will when you click on it you'll see a, a page like this now on this page, all you need to do is click on duplicate and when you duplicate this, the same strategy will basically be able to uh, be able to uh, be visible in the my strategies section out here in your Tradetron account. Now when you are on your my strategies, you will be able to deploy the strategy. So if you don't have any other strategy deployed or you are on the free plan, then you are allowed to make one strategy, uh, one strategy um, uh, uh, deployed. Uh, completely free of cost on paper trading so you can deploy this on paper trading test it on uh, on on zero risk and then uh, and then execute this live only once you are com comfortable about the logic and the trades being taken now let's go to the editing part of the strategy or what what keywords have i used and why have i used those keywords so in this in this strategy what we are basically doing is that we have a particular entry time and we have a particular exit time the entry time of the strategy is at least four to five weeks before the expiry. So let's assume we are in the start of uh, start of uh, March. So in this case, we will basically be in the in the first two weeks, in the first week or in the second week, we will have taken our entry into the current month expiry instruments. So let's say Bank Nifty, we'll look at current month expiry uh, options uh, and we will enter into it in the first two weeks. Now we will exit one week before the instruments expire to avoid very large MTM swings, which is what Jagan said in his video. In this video, I have thus made my entry conditions as such, where I'm basically checking the days difference is greater than 20 to make an entry uh, in, in the start of the month. Uh, and the days difference is checked between today and the current month expiry of the Bank Nifty instrument. And I'm also making sure that the days difference is less than 25 to make sure it doesn't take a too far away uh, ex expiry. It basically happens in the first uh, one or two weeks. Then I'm also adding a condition that if time is more than 9.30, I want to take my trade. Finally, I have my positions out here. Now this entire strategy is basically built on this one concept, which is called standard deviation. Now in the standard deviation, according to Jagan, what he is doing is that he is basically looking uh, at, at a different way of, uh, of understanding standard deviation, where he is basically looking at the ATM strike and calling the combined premium of the ATM strike as one standard deviation. So for the for the stock options that he's shorting, 
he is basically uh, he is basically going uh, going one standard deviation away. Now, how does he define one standard deviation? Very simple. At nine thirty, he is basically checking what is the value of the call option of that particular instrument and the put option of that particular instrument. So let's assume HDFC Bank is trading at fifteen hundred. So we'll check the fifteen hundred call option, fifteen hundred put option. Assume they are trading at fifty fifty rupees each. So we are getting the combined premium as hundred rupees. So hundred rupees is basically called one standard deviation. Now once we know our one standard deviation number for HDFC Bank, we are shorting, uh, shorting uh, the 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 ATM ATM number which is fifteen hundred plus hundred. Which is which is that one standard deviation number for our call option and minus hundred for our put option. So for both our our stock options, we are going only one standard deviation away and we are shorting these instruments. With that understood, for our hedging, we are not going one standard deviation away. We are going one point two five standard deviation away. Which means that let's say if Bank Nifty is currently at forty five thousand. We are basically looking at the ATM call and put instrument. Let's assume it is 400, 400 rupees. So we get 800 as our total ATM instrument uh, value number. We are now going 25% up of this 800 rupees. So 25% up from 800 is basically 1000. So we are basically going at going and shorting. Uh, sorry, going and buying the 45,000 plus 1000 call and 45,000 minus 1000 put instrument in order to uh, buy our hedges. So our shorts are happening in HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank call and put instrument uh, options, and I'm, we are buying the Bank Nifty call and put option uh, instruments, which is 1.25 standard deviation away. Now let's understand the first uh, first uh, 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 first uh, uh, position builder that I have built. Uh, mind you, position builder is basically the whole crux of this entire strategy that he shared. So in my uh, entry, I'm first buying my hedges so that I get some kind of margin benefit uh, uh, as a cushion to take my entry. Now I'm in my position builder. I have a call option of Bank Nifty, straightforward, current month expiry, and two lots. Why two lots? Because I'm shorting one lot of call, one lot of put for both HDFC and ICICI Bank. So I'm basically looking at uh, two lots. Now in my strike FX, I have a very long, scary looking formula. This long, scary-looking formula is very simple if you break it down into simpler chunks. Two simple chunks are there. One is I'm doing two round round off values. One round off is basically to round off the futures value. So I'm rounding off the uh, the the Bank Nifty futures value to the nearest hundred. So let's assume futures at forty-five thousand one hundred and forty-five thousand seventy-five points. So I'm rounding it off to forty-five thousand one hundred. That is the logic I'm doing out here. The second round is basically a round where I'm doing two different math operations out here. My first math operation out here that you are seeing here is basically a math operation where I'm summing two different keywords, which is called indicator value time. If you haven't used this keyword, this is a very powerful keyword where I can put a particular time and I can define which indicator do I want that uh, want uh, do, uh, I need. So, for example, out here. I need the value of my call option and the value of my put option at 9:30. So what was the close at 9:30? So in here I'm selecting my time as 9:29, and I'm selecting my keyword as close. So now after 9:29 at 9:30 dot, it will find the close value of the ATM instrument of call and put. So in my indicator value, I've selected 9:29, and out here in my instrument name, I've selected my Uh, NFO Bank Nifty uh, current month expiry call option at ATM. So I'm basically getting the ATM call option and ATM put option. The 400 plus 400 logic I'm doing out here. So in this math operation, I'm adding these two indicator value keywords, and by doing that, I'm getting a summation of the uh, of the combined premium that was there uh, for that particular uh, instrument. Finally, I also have to increase this by 25%. So the first math operation that we have. Is basically there to to uh, to to multiply this this second math operation, the value that I got from my second math operation, to multiply this by one point two five. By multiplying this by one point two five, I get the eight hundred times one point two five, which is thousand points. And this thou this thousand point number, not necessary that the numbers will always be round numbers like eight hundred or so. It could be a number like let's say eight hundred and twenty six. 
what will we do in that case so we need to round this entire value the overall output to a nearest strike price number for which i'm rounding it off to the nearest 100 so by this for my call option i'm going the futures value plus that particular 1.25 standard deviation number and for my put option like you can see out here the the, the formula is exactly the same only difference is that in my strike price i'm going minus from the uh, from the futures value so futures value minus this 1.25 standard deviation number now after doing this i am basically uh, uh, that is that is all the logic that i have in this set one i have a set two now which is dependent on my set one so if my set one takes a trade only then my set two will take a trade how have i created this dependency using a keyword called traded instrument so in set two, I'm having only one keyword, which is checking that if traded instruments entry price of bank Nifty exists, only then it will take a trade. By doing this, I'm making sure that set one has taken an entry. After set one has taken an entry, I'm basically going to short my uh, short my uh, stock uh, stock uh, options. Now, why am I not adding a repair? Why am I adding a second set? I'm not adding a repair because on TradeTron, you need to remember that if you are taking an entry in one particular underlying, so if I'm taking an entry in Bank Nifty, my repair has to be in Bank Nifty only. If I have a repair in, let's say, Fin Nifty or a repair in some other instrument, then it will not work. My entry instrument, entry underlying instrument and the repair underlying instrument have to be the same. So to circumvent this problem, I have another set only. So my set, set two is dependent on my set one. Once my set one takes a trade, my set two for my stock options will basically take my trade. Again, in your, in my position builder, I have these long scary formulas. The scary formula is very simple uh, if you try and understand it. So I have one call of HDFC bank uh, for current month, uh, current month, and I'm selecting a strike price uh, of one lot, which is again, I'm rounding off the futures of HDFC bank. And then I'm basically finding out by one standard deviation using my math operation formula and then I am uh, I am uh, basically adding my futures value plus the formula of the one standard deviation I got. Now in your, in Bank Nifty everywhere I was rounding off to the nearest 100 points. In your, I'm rounding it off to the nearest 10 points. Why? Because the strike price interval of HDFC Bank is 10 points. So there is a strike every 10 points at, at this moment. In future, if ever the strike number, the, the difference between the strike changes, then you will have to make sure that you are updating these changed numbers into this round keyword out here. If you don't do it, then it is possible that your strategy will make some issues. So always make sure this round number is basically updated for the updated uh, instrument strike price, which happens in stock options on a regular basis. After this, I'll basically uh, have the call, uh, I'll have the put option for my HDFC bank. The difference between the call and put will basically be nothing but a minus sign. So in, in call option, I'm going plus, in put option, I'm going minus. Same thing, the exact same logic I'm doing for my uh, for my uh, call option of my ICICI bank. So again, in ICICI bank, my strike price difference is, is 10 points. So I'm selecting all my rounds as the round of the nearest 10 point. Then I am uh, going futures plus one standard deviation for my call option for ICICI bank and futures minus one standard deviation for my put option for my ICICI bank. Once I have done this, my entry of, of set one has taken place, my entry of set two has taken place. So this means I have taken my entry into the short strangle and bought my hedges. Now I will have my universal exit logic. Now as per Jagan, in this strategy, if you are making a loss of more than 3%, you should close this uh, strategy and exit with a stop loss. So for that, I have my first uh, first uh, keyword as PNL is less than minus number 9000 times multiplier. So uh, uh, as per his calculations, the, the required capital will basically be 3 lakh. So 3% of that is, is minus uh, 9000. So PNL is less than minus 9000. Secondly, I have a universal exit PSL keyword. Now this keyword is basically there uh, so that I can have some kind of a trailing stop loss in place. So if I'm getting 2% of my capital on this entire setup, after that, uh, if, if let's say this, this setup goes against me, in that case, 
I will basically lock my profit at one percent. So I will at least have a profit of one percent. And every time this 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 profit increases by one percent, I'll move my trailing stop loss also by one percent. Now I have selected very conservative numbers out here. You could feel free to change these numbers from let's say two percent to let's say two and a half percent, or or the the increments instead of one percent could be at let's say zero point one percent, so that it's 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 better capturing your profit every time. the the profit is made um, so all of these different numbers could be what you can play around and test with finally i have my uh, my my days difference condition so if there's one week to go for the for the current week expiry and today the difference between them if there's seven days or more and if the time is more than 3 o'clock so if it's close to 320 in that case i will basically square off my strategy which is what my universal exit is doing now after doing my universal exit There are some advanced settings that I have changed, and there's a very critical, important change that I have made out here. Now, the important change is that I have a reactivate on exit time as seven uh, seven days out here. Now, this is because let's say if I exit one week before the expiry, I don't want to take a re-entry again after after that particular uh, time. So, I want my strategy to stay exited for one week, and after one week, after the expiry has happened. For the next week expiry, I want to begin taking that uh, same uh, same trading logic setup for my next monthly expiry. So this is the automation that I have done. Finally, I select my uh, condition check to be con to be continuous. I select my trading capital as three lakh. Uh, take trades as uh, uh, as after the exact first second, and my last condition check has to be one minute before the exchange closes. Now with that, I will update my strategy. and uh, we are ready to go with testing the strategy on paper trade for free on tradetron so a huge shout out to it jagan for kindly uh, sharing this uh, strategy on the traders convention uh, event um, uh, if you want to have a look at that video i have shared the link in the description you can check it out uh, as well um, as usual if you have any other suggestions on what we should cover what type of strategies we should cover in future sessions feel free to link that strategy in the description uh, or share uh, share the link with us over email and we would be happy to cover it in uh, future uh, sessions thank you very much uh, for your time goodbye i hope you like this video